the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning, dear church, and welcome to worship. A special welcome to those of you who may be visiting with us. We're so glad you are here. We are the church together. A welcome to those of you who are joining us from your homes or on vacation or wherever you log in to your computer. Again, the church expands just like the yeast in the dough, which we are going to hear about later on in the gospel reading. Today is the ministry fair after worship, so I will be shaking your hand at this door so you know which way to go down the hall to the ministry fair and ice cream social. Welcome to worship. Isn't it good to be the church together? Please rise as you are comfortable. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. In the presence of our reconciling God and this community of faith, we confess our sin together. For the times we have not loved you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have not welcomed others as you have welcomed us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times we have sown seeds of discord and division rather than seeds of your love, justice, and joy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Beloved of God, hear this word of hope. As people knit into the life of Jesus Christ, change is possible for us. Jesus healed the sick, 
forgave sinners and gave aimless people deep purpose. Receive forgiveness for the past and new hope for the future. Knowing God's great love, may we live the way of Jesus. Amen. Children of God, we have a calling and a purpose. God invites us into celebrating God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally, and growing in God's call to serve the world. This is who we are, and at the same time, this is who we strive to become. We are the church, a people whose unity is in Jesus Christ, who gathers around us word and water, wine and bread. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I would love to see the children up front around this table with the bowl on it. If you'd like to join me there, come on up. I also have the step stool, so no worries. We'll have, we'll, we will make use of this eventually. Okay, hello. Yeah. You can take a break if you need one. Oh, hello, you can say standing or seated. Hello, good morning. Glad you're here today. How is everyone today? Blessed by God today and every day. Well, I just will show you right now what I have. It is an empty bowl this morning, but we're going to do a little science experiment that I would like to show you. First, has anyone ever cooked with yeast before? Do you know what this is? Oh, what do you use yeast for? Do you have any ideas? Okay, no, that's all right. Any ideas for what you would use? It's called yeast. It's even hard to say. Can you say the word yeast? yeast? Yeast. It is used to bake bread. Anything else? I think that's pretty much it. Okay. What else? Cinnamon, Cinnamon rolls. rolls. Oh, speaking my language. Okay. Would you tell me 
I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in this bowl. Oh, first, just look in there. I'll, I'll come around. Smell it if you want. I don't know how active this is. I got it out of my cupboard. It was expired in 2022. So <laughs> we're gonna, it could be a successful children's time today or it could be something else. <laughs> Would you like to look in there? Do you see how tiny the yeast is? It's so tiny. Can you see in there? It's so tiny. Have you ever, you, yes, you can see. Thank you for being so patient. See how it's so tiny. This is what makes the bread expand and get nice and puffy. Do you want to look in there? It's called yeast. It's very tiny and it smells a little bit. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to dump it all in there. What the heck? I know. Taking a risk here. Okay. This water's warm. Again, people, we're going to see if this works. I'm going to come over here so we can all see. All right. Let's see if it does something. Oh. Is it doing anything? What do you see happening? Oh, smell. Wait, do you smell that? What's smell? <sighs> yeah, what do you think? It's smelling sweeter. It's bubbling. You see the bubbles? It's bubbling up a little bit. It's expanding a little bit. It's turning the water, right? it's turning the water a different color. So it's doing something. If we were to cook with this and take a little more time and have yeast that wasn't expired, it would bubble up and expand even more. Do you, didn't everybody smell this? It's already smelling a little bit. like. So it's doing something. Can you smell it? Yeah, it's kind of a... It smells like coconut. Yeah. So it's great to have, you know, that's a good descriptor. It's hard to explain. You know, you use what you know to explain things. Okay, let's try our next. Everybody ready for our, we'll mustard just leave seeds. this. Oh, what's this? Mustard seeds. Oh, mustard seeds. Any, have anyone seen these before? No. Oh, great. Would you please hold out your hands? Okay. Hold out your hands. Hold out your hands. Put one. They're very tiny. Everyone would like you to know they're very tiny. You can have one, yes. I will be right there. I'm gonna try to give you one mustard seed into your hands. If it falls on the, guess who's vacuuming later? You lost it. Oh, yeah. it's understandable. It's, you lost it too? Okay, hold on. I can hold on to my brother. Guess what? We're gonna grow mustard crop in the carpet next week. Here you go. No, no, he can hold his own. He's got it. He's learning how to do it himself. Hold it over the table. Make your hand like a little bowl. Can you make it like a little cup? We're going to... All right. Remember nope, still. Here, can I put it in your shirt pocket? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know what? We got to... Did everybody get a seed? Okay. You got two accidentally. Okay. Okay, everybody. Mustard seeds. Oh, you lost yours? Hang on. Here you go. That's okay. You know, if I had all of you hold one of these, you'd probably be in the same boat. They're pretty tiny. Okay, everybody. Here is what you need to know about a mustard seed. If you plant it in the ground, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to it's going to sprout and grow. Let's all pretend that we are a mustard seed. Get really tiny. Get as tiny as this mustard seed. You can see if you can get very tiny. You lost yours here. You can have mine. Here you go. Okay, everybody. We've watered the seed and the sun is shining. So we are going to grow like a mustard seed. Everybody start growing. You're a plant. You have branches. Pr spread your branches out. Spread your branches out as high as you can. Did you know that a mustard plant can get as tall as you from that tiny little seed that you were holding in your hand? A mustard plant can get even almost as tall as me. <gasps> That's tall, right, everybody? <laughs> it's so tall. And did you know that from that tiny... Okay, we have more lost mustard seeds. Hold on. You have four? You found two? Okay, we're putting Zach on mustard seed pickup duty later on. 
A mustard seed is just like God's love. It grows and it's surprising and it can grow so much it can shelter the birds of the air and it can spread. It can even be used for medicinal purposes. Don't know if you knew that. I'm learning things. Would anyone like another mustard seed to take back and show someone in the pew so they can see how tiny it is? Okay. All right. God's love is amazing. It can grow. Hold your hand into a little... Just give us some time, everyone. Okay? Would anyone five. else? You, you found five? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, thank you for being patient. Imagine if we all remembered how God's love grows from the tiniest, smallest things. How much fun it is to share God's love and be amazed by God's love growing. Anyone else? Would you like a mustard seed on your way to sit down? Here's what our, here's what it did. I don't know if it worked. Oh, look, see that chunk in the bottom there? That might be something. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we've decided it is something. Yes, something good, something expansive. Let's stand down and we will go sit down now. Thanks for um, participating in my experiments. It was somewhat successful. You can go show someone in the pews and we'll find out how many mustard plants we grow by next week, okay? Would you like some extra? Okay, I put one in your, I'll put one in your shirt pocket too, extra. I want some more. Okay. Okay, thanks for coming up, everybody. Successful children's time again. If anyone else would like a mustard seed, you can find me in the multi-purpose room. Just want to take home. Okay. See you later. The first reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 29. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed 
to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who at the right hand of God also indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid, then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? The disciples answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. The kingdom of heaven is like. In the Gospel of Matthew, we hear about the kingdom of heaven, parables about the kingdom of heaven. In the Gospels of Mark or Luke, we hear about the kingdom of God. 
These are the same ideas with a little bit different words. What is God's reign like? What is God's realm like? And how do we talk about that? And how do we look for it? And how do we participate in it? The kingdom of heaven is like... In early COVID days, when everybody put hearts on their windows of their homes and their doors, do you remember that? Did you see that here in Wisconsin? I was in Iowa, driving through the neighborhood, and there were hearts on windows, and people made uh, stained glass crosses on their glass doors out of art somehow. So even though I couldn't visit people in person, I saw the hearts and the love looking out from their homes. The kingdom of heaven, the reign of God, the realm of God is like the tiniest seed you could imagine. In fact, a mustard plant is like an invasive weed and it shows up where we don't think it will and it grows so tall, three to five feet max, that branches can hold a bird. A little scrubby plant, not an empire with a lofty cedar tree, although you will find that imagery in the Hebrew Bible, and that is the imagery of empire. Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven, the realm of God, the reign of God is like a scrappy little mustard plant that you cannot root out, and there will be space to shelter the most vulnerable. If you're looking for the kingdom, If you're hoping for the kingdom, if you want to participate in the kingdom of God, plant a little mustard seed. I don't know, are these plantable? Horticulture expert, if I plant the mustard seed that I bought at the grocery store, is that going to grow or is that just for cooking? I don't know. All that to say, Are you looking for God in the loudest, shiniest, biggest places? Or are you open to being surprised? You know when that woman was making the bread in the parable? It says she hid the yeast in the dough. She hid it in there. It's a surprise. And you know what? She used three measures of flour, which is 60 pounds. We're going to have bread for days. God's love, God's reign, God's realm is expansive and growing. And if you're looking for the fruit of the kingdom, if you want to participate in the fruit of the kingdom, you will be open and expansive and growing too. You will be compassionate and loving and joyful too. You will be reaching out to your neighbor too. You will be giving thanks to God that you're alive another day too. Just like that person that found a treasure hidden in a field, going along just another regular day, and all of a sudden, there's this amazing, this something, this this reason that I might be alive. So I'm going to follow that. I'm going to follow the voice of love. And I'm going to try to speak in that voice too. Just like a tiny seed can produce a plant that shelters the birds of the air, just like that yeast hidden in the dough expanding to feed everybody here and then some more, just like that surprise I found in my life, this is where God is, this is where community is, this is where love is. The kingdom of God is expansive and growing, but also small and surprising, and you just might be knocked off your feet in the best way. The pearl that the merchant was searching for, he finally found it, and now everything in his life is dedicated to that pearl, to the kingdom of God, to growing the kingdom, to seeing the kingdom, to participating in the kingdom. And it's not a kingdom of division and pain. It's not a kingdom of empire and destruction. It's a kingdom that puts little hearts on the windows. It's a kingdom that hands another mustard seed to the kid who dropped 17 on the floor. It's a kingdom 
It's a kingdom that has enough room for you and me and an abundance of healing. Yes, there are other kingdoms out there and there are other voices out there and they may be loud and they may be full of hate, but those voices in the end, they can't help but be silenced by the power of love. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the life, death, and resurrection of God in the flesh transforms even death into life. And so if you are living under the heel of another type of kingdom, if you are waiting for freedom, the God of justice and love will never leave you behind. So what about you, church? Will you seek out the birds of the air who have been left in the heat of the sun? Will you ask God to help you grow your little mustard branches just a couple inches farther so we can reach each other and know that we're in this together, that there's a little more room for love and peace and joy and freedom because we trust the God of life. No other voice can tell us what to do. When you go home today, if you have mustard seeds in your houses or yeast, little tiny granules that have transformative power, remember Jesus' words to the disciples to help spark their imagination, to keep looking for God, trusting God, and perhaps even living in the presence of God and sharing God's presence with everybody around you. The kingdom of heaven is like... The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of heaven is at work in you. So take your little mustard seed self. Take the treasure that you have found in the good news of Jesus Christ and put your heart on the window. And you will be the yeast in the dough that shares God's love. We follow in the footsteps of the one who transforms even death into new life. That is true power. That is true life. No other voices, no other powers come even close. Blessed be the mustard seeds, and blessed be God. Amen.
together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. As we gather our hearts for prayer, please keep in your prayers Jim and Sharon, neighbors of Esther Gibbs. After several years, Jim's cancer has returned. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all servants of the gospel. Equip rostered and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Form confirmands and catechumens into disciples. In your mercy, hear us, God. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Safeguard the environment, clean polluted rivers and lakes, preserve the mighty tree and the tiny mustard seed, and send advocates for sustainable practices. In your mercy, hear us out of compassion. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations. Instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil. Free those who are oppressed and protect those facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. In your mercy. Hear us, God of compassion. Merciful God, we pray for all in any need. Protect those fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked, soothe all who grieve, and heal the sick, especially Jim. In your mercy. Hear Holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today and those absent from our assembly. Grant safely to travelers and refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. In your mercy. Hear us Eternal God, we give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with their grace. In your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share words and signs of Christ's peace.
as you continue sharing the piece, I'll share a few announcements with you. If you are visiting today, we have blue and white cards. We would love to hear from you and know who you are. If you have updated information, we would also love a blue and white card that you can place in the offering plate. As I said earlier, today is the ministry fair. Following the worship service, please head to the multi-purpose room for the ministry fair and ice cream social. Many of our ministries and programs have created beautiful and interactive booths for you. That's including all the ministries that happen in the building, even if they're not just Emmanuel. So you've got PEP, you've got the pantry, you've got English as a second language. It's going to be so fun. So I will see you over there in approximately 15 minutes. The event is for all ages, and there will be ice cream and other goodies for everyone. We have an announcement from Wanda, who's going to make her way up here. Uh, in the meantime, as she's preparing, I'm going to give you a little update on the building loan because it's the ministry fair. How well are we utilizing our building? Also, how much money do we want to have towards the loan before we roll into a mortgage? Short story, we're working on $100,000 by the time we get to the end of January so we can bring that loan down below a million or to a million before we roll into a mortgage. So if one person writes the whole check, if 100 of you write a $1,000 check, if 200 of you write a $500 check, check the math with me on this, but that's how we get to 100,000 by January, unless one of you wins the lottery, in which case we'll pay it all. <laughs> Thank you for contributing towards that loan that helps us keep our ministries going. Many thanks. Now we'll hear from one of those ministries that happen in our building faithfully every week, Bread and Roses. Thanks, Wanda. You're welcome. Good morning. Just a reminder to those who are familiar with um, Bread and Roses and um, kind of a piece of information for those that aren't, I'm just going to let you know about it. The original Bread and Roses program was started in 1986 and held at St. Paul's Episcopal Church here in town. One of the founders was Reverend Fred Himrick, then pastor of St. Paul's. His goal, and our goal, is to help the people of the community by giving them an opportunity for socializing and providing a network for help. The dinners were discontinued several years later upon his retirement. In 1998, the Social Concerns Committee at, here at Emmanuel recognized the urgent need to restart Bread and Roses for the community. After a year of research, the committee proposed that our church council approve the Bread and Roses program with meals to be held downstairs in the fellowship hall. With the assistance of Clergy Roundtable and other agencies, Jean Quapel and Judy Hofstetter agreed to undertake this project and become the cooking team. Bread and Roses reopened in January of 1999. In 2015, Jean and Judy retired, and a series of cooks took over the helm. In January of 2016, Bread and Roses Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit was created with the board of directors made up of local church members, churches throughout the community. Emmanuel, our Watertown area churches and nonprofit groups continue to support and care for Bread and Roses, which is, in the re which is now in the rebuilding phase. The pandemic forced dine in, dining in to shut down, so we started a carryout service. Currently, over 200 carryout meals are served each week. It is the desire of all involved that in-person dining, dining and fellowship memory, uh, excuse me, ministry, be resumed. But in order for this to be feasible, additional board members, cooks, service groups, and dishwashers are needed. We are also creating an exciting new volunteer opportunity. Two hospital co or hospitality coordinators will welcome, orient, and direct community service groups each week in a rotation. Historically, Bread and Roses was funded through community donations. Since COVID, however, the primary funding source has been grants, such as from United Way, CACS, Piggly Wiggly, and Walmart. The need to expand donations and funding sources is ongoing as well. If you are interested in supporting this important and valuable community mission, um, I'll be in the multi-purpose room 
room for the ministry uh, fair, and you can just talk to me and ask questions, and I'll try to answer them and uh, take your name if you're interested in signing up for anything. Thanks. Thank you, Wanda. And we are fed to go and feed. So I'm going to tell you about communion this morning. After we've heard about feeding the community, we are fed at the table to go and feed and share the abundance of Christ in so many ways. Here's how communion works at Emmanuel. You'll be invited to come up front, hold out your hands, into which will be placed a wafer. Take a small cup from the silver tray, which is filled with dealcoholized wine. Place those cups in baskets by these pillars, and you may return to your pew by the side aisle. If you need gluten-free wafers, those are available. Simply ask your server. And if you would like communion brought to you in your pew, let the usher know, and we will meet you there. This is the meal where we are made one with Christ and one with each other. Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Have you sins that two men's eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please rise as you are comfortable. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our praise. Mighty and merciful God, you are our rock and our salvation. Hear us as we praise, call us to your table, and grant us your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the sharing of this meal, we remember Christ's death. We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all your promises may come to us and your whole creation. Empower us by that same Spirit to love and forgive, that our lives may anticipate that day when you will make all things new. Gather our prayers with those of all your faithful people and unite us with the one who makes us one. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The bread which we break, is it not communion in the body of Christ? This cup of blessing which we share, is it not communion in the blood of Christ? So all of us are one body, all who share the one bread and drink from the cup. The banquet is prepared for you and all are welcome here. You may be seated.
Please rise as you are comfortable. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. As we leave this place and gather for the ministry fair, we affirm our Christian vocations. Siblings in Christ, both your work and your rest are in God. Will you endeavor to pattern your life on the Lord Jesus Christ in gratitude to God and in service to others at morning and evening, at work and at play, all the days of your life? We will, and yes, God, tell us. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have knit these, your servants, into one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Look with favor upon them in their commitment to serve in Christ's name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.